everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm continuing making cotton Christmas ornaments based on Alice in Wonderland. So let's get started. I've decided to make the rabbit dressed as a herald. Here I'm using the classic illustration by John Tenniel as a guide. I think most of you know this picture very well. So, first I'm making a cotton ball and winding it with a thread to make a body. And then I'm bending arms and legs out of thin wire, referring to the picture and attaching them to the body using the thread. After that I'm wrapping the wire frame in cotton wool. I'm bending the base for the ears and the head out of the wire just the same way. I'm tying the wire ears to the body and also adding a cotton ball where the head should be. I'm also winding it with a thread and at the same time adding a loop for hanging. Here is a beard which has turned out. I'm covering everything with white glue and adding more pieces of cotton to the body and the lower legs. Then I'm waiting until it has dried and begin working on the head. First I'm wrapping the wire frame of the ears with cotton wool as I did for the pose. And then I'm adding more cotton wool to the sides to get flat ears like rabbits and hares have. I'm attaching two small cotton balls over the head, this will be the muzzle, and also a longer piece, this will be the nose. And then I'm adding more cotton to the cheeks until I get the shape of the head that I need. I'm also adding more cotton to the body, making the tummy and the butt more visible. And of course I'm making a fluffy tail. I'm adding a bit more cotton to the ears and giving them the final look. And the rabbit base is ready, all that is left is to add some texture. I'm placing a thin, almost transparent layer of cotton wool onto the board, coating it well with glue so that the cotton wool is completely soaked in it, and then I'm gathering the cotton in small folds towards the center using any sharp tool to get a crinkled texture. The thinner the cotton wool layer is, the better it works. I'm taking this piece off the board carefully and placing it onto the rabbit, beginning from the head. I'm smoothing the edges with a brush and correcting the texture if needed, finishing the look. After that I'm making the next crinkled piece, attaching it to the rabbit and so on. Since the rabbit will be dressed, I'm not covering the rabbit completely, but work with visible areas only, the head, the outer side of the ears, palms on the front legs, hind legs and lower part of the body. Everything else will be covered, so I'm not making wool texture there. 
I've made a polymer clay trumpet for the rabbit in advance. I've used a wooden stick as a base and shaped the trumpet on it similar to the one at the illustration. I've baked the trumpet according to the instructions and then I've added a cotton flag to it. And now, while attaching the crinkled cotton, I'm also attaching the trumpet to the rabbit, adding a tiny piece of cotton wool around the trumpet, as if there are lips. And I'm also posing the hands so that it holds the trumpet. I'm hot gluing the eyes to the rabbit. I have plastic toy eyes here. Since the rabbit is albino, my eyes are transparent. I will tint them pink later. After the eyes are attached, I'm covering the top and the bottom of them with tiniest pieces of cotton, making eyelids, in order they look more natural. Then I'm adding sleeves. In the picture he's wearing a shirt or perhaps it's a jacket, but since only the sleeves are visible, I cannot say for sure. I'm wrapping the hands in thin layers of cotton wool and then stretching the sleeve edges slightly to make small lace cuffs. After drying I'm painting the sleeves blue. Then I'm going to make a cape. I'm coating a thin layer of cotton wool with white glue and smoothing it with my fingers on the board and then carefully taking it off. This will make a thin sheet of cotton. I'm cutting out two trapezoidal pieces for the front and for the back of the cape. I'm attaching these pieces to the rabbit and adding the winglet sleeves that I've cut out of the same cotton sheet. I'm waiting until it's dry and painting the cape yellow. I'm waiting again till it's dry and after that I'm outlining hearts ornament on the cape with a pencil and then I'm painting the hearts red. After that I'm taking a contour paint and making the edging on the cape and also internal lines on the cape with this paint. I'm repeating these steps on the other side of the cape. Be sure to wait until the front side is dry, otherwise it is very easy to spoil everything. In the end, I've decided to circle the hearts with a bronze contour, so the cape looks more elegant and more royal, and I'm decorating the flag the same way. Next, I'm going to make a collar. I'm cutting a thin layer of cotton wool covered with glue into ribbons about half a centimeter wide, and then I'm making many loops in this ribbon. I have already made such a collar for the Queen of Hearts. In fact, this one was originally intended for her, but it turned out to be too wide, so I've dressed up the rabbit in it. This was my first try to make such a collar, and I've assembled it and then glued it to the figurine, but it turned out to be more convenient to shape it right on the neck, as I did to the Queen later. Here I had to straighten all the loops for a very long time after gluing the collar, they are easily deformed while wet. After the collar is dry, I'm painting the face. First I'm painting the inside of the ears and the nose pale pink. A bit of pink goes around the eyes and I'm also adding a bit of brown here so that the eyes don't look sick. And of course I'm adding dots of the moustache and circling the mouth a little. I'm cutting small ribbons about a centimeter wide out of a thin layer of cotton wool and I'm assembling a bow on the shoulder out of four pieces. A loop a second loop and two ends. I'm adding a second bow to the other shoulder, though it won't be visible from the front.
I've painted the bows blue, but I didn't like how they look, they kind of merged with the sleeves, so I'm repainting them red. I'm painting the trumpet in bronze. And finally I'm going to make a scroll of parchment. I've printed a vintage French label on paper edged with coffee. This label looks nice, but in fact, after rolling, almost nothing is visible, so you can use plain paper for that. So I'm rolling the paper into a roll and winding it with a thread. Fixing the thread with a drop of hot glue and attaching a seal to the free end of the thread. The seal is just a polymer clay coin painted bronze. All that is left is to attach the scroll to the rabbit. And you are done. I think the rabbit has turned out to be very recognizable and totally associated with Alice in Wonderland, although the white rabbit holding a pocket watch is also an absolutely iconic character. By the way, would you like to watch me also making the rabbit with a watch, bearing a coat and gloves and everything? Write me in the comments below. I've prepared six characters for now, but I'm thinking of adding a couple more. Such a rabbit looks great on a Christmas tree and you don't need any any base for it, only cotton wool and some wire. And the second character I'm going to be making today is the blue caterpillar. I'll start with the face. Here I'm using silicone mold of masks. I think the expression is just what is needed for making the stoned caterpillar. I'm modifying the face a little, making a hole in the mouth for a mouthpiece and adding wrinkles. I'm also sculpting a hooker out of polymer clay. I'm wrapping a stick in polymer clay and making two balls at the edges, one small and the second one large. Here you want to make a kind of a jug in shape. I'm attaching a stick to the side of the hooker, attaching the second stick to the caterpillar's mouth and sanding the whole thing to bake. Making a caterpillar is actually quite easy. I'm rolling several cotton balls, you can use ready-made ones as well, and then covering them with glue and adding more cotton. I'm attaching the face to one of the cotton balls, then wrapping it in cotton wool and attaching the second ball to it. And then I'm attaching the third ball. After that I'm assembling the tail of the caterpillar. I'm doing it separately, since the upper part of the body should be raised above the ground and all the structure will not hold its shape yet. Just the same way I'm connecting the balls together, here I've made one ball smaller than the others. This is gonna be the tip of the tail. Then I'm priming the face with an acrylic primer. And finally I'm connecting the two halves with one more cotton ball. And while the caterpillar dries, I'm going to make a mushroom. I'm twisting the base for the mushroom leg out of a newspaper and wrapping it in cotton wool. I'm making the leg thicker near the bottom, adding more cotton wool here and leaving it thinner near the top. Now 
To make the top of the mushroom, I'm cutting out a circle of thick paper. I'm crumpling it in my hands so that the top is kind of curved in all dimensions. And then I'm coating paper with glue and adding a layer of cotton wool on the top to make more or less convex top. I'm bending the edges of the cotton wool to the other side of the paper circle to make soft edges. I'm waiting until the leg and the top dry well and hot gluing them together. After that, I'm covering the other side of the mushroom top with glue and attaching pieces of cotton wool on it. Here, pay attention to the direction of the fibers. They should go from the center outwards. It's important if you want to have realistic gales from the inside of the top. Even now, when I'm just coating cotton wool with glue, it looks already similar to the mushroom gills, thanks to placing the fibers correctly. I'm bending the edges of the cotton wool upwards this time. And finally I'm making gills on wet cotton wool with a stack or a thick needle. Yeah, today you're getting a cotton mushroom tutorial as a bonus. You can also make such mushrooms as separate ornaments. I'm making a hole in one of the joints in the caterpillar and inserting the wire there. They will be the hands. I've forgotten to make them earlier. I'm shaping the hands as desired, the caterpillar is going to lie on one elbow and hold the hookah's mouthpiece with the other hand, or whatever this mouth thing in hookah is called. Then I'm wrapping the hands in cotton wool and coating it with white glue. After everything has dried, I'm making a loop for hanging. Here there was a slippery moment for me, I had to choose the correct location of the suspension so that the caterpillar wouldn't hang upside down or tail down, but hang more or less horizontally. The best place was found somewhere in the top third of the caterpillar. I'm covering the attachment point with cotton and also adding more cotton to the middle part of the caterpillar to make overall shape better. I'm also adding a little of cotton wool to the palms. I'm not trying to make five fingers, just a slight thickening at the end of the hand and then I'm making it forked. While the caterpillar dries, I'm returning to the mushroom, adding more cotton wool to the top to make it a little more convex. In this case, I don't need a strongly convex one, otherwise it will be inconvenient to lie on it. I'm also making a groove along the edge of the top, something like a manito, which I made out of velvet in the fall. Do you remember it? After drying, I'm painting the top red. After that, I felt the mushroom turned out to be very cartoonish, so I'm mixing several shades of pink, yellow, orange and painting the top in these shades with a sponge randomly and then adding a little bit more red in the center so that it would not be too pale. It looks much better after this. I'm painting the caterpillar in light blue. Then I'm tinting the joints with a slightly darker shade. I'm painting the face. Here there's nothing special, the caterpillar is all blue, so I'm just painting the whites of the eyes white and tinting the eyes a little darker blue. I'm drawing yellow dots on the sides of the caterpillar. And then I'm turning it into a mattress. I'm drawing stripes on the back with a thin brush, first using a darker shade of blue. By the way, all these are not different colors, I'm just mixing the same blue color with white in different proportions, so that it turns out lighter or darker blue. Here I'm painting the stripes with the original color, which is cornflower blue. And after that I'm adding lighter stripes. I'm circling the yellow spots in light blue 
And finally I'm touching the tummy with light blue using a sponge. I've decided to make a hat for the caterpillar, so I'm twisting a cone out of cotton and coating it with glue. I'm attaching the hat and pressing it on the top to make a kind of a bucket. After drying I'm painting the bucket in cream and then I'm drawing checkered pattern on it. Here I've outlined the checks with a pencil first. I'm painting the hooker bronze and finally I'll be assembling everything together. I'm hot gluing the caterpillar onto the mushroom and I'm attaching the hooker next to it. Here check the center of gravity again so that the ornament hangs vertically as it should. I'm hot gluing a thread to the hooker stick and I'm attaching it its other end to the mouthpiece. Finally, I'm painting the sticks and hot glue on them using the same bronze paint. All that is left is to upgrade the mushroom a little. As you may have guessed, I'm making a fly agaric and so it lacks spots and a skirt. To make a skirt, I'm covering a thin layer of cotton wool with glue, taking it off the board and folding it in a skirt, and then attaching the skirt to the mushroom. I'm shaping the skirt with a stack and a brush and let it dry well. Further, I'm going to be making spots. Here I've decided to make them convex. Fly agarics have these. I make the spots out of small pieces of cotton wool and shape them right over the top. And finally I'm adding more cotton wool from the bottom of the mushroom to make grass and after drying I'm painting it green. I'm decorating the caterpillar hat with a bronze outline to make it more elegant. The hookah is usually decorated with embossing, so I'm adding ornaments with contour paint on the surface of the hookah to imitate it. I think the caterpillar turned out exactly as it should, thick and lazy imposing. By the way, at the very end of the walk I have begun thinking, why have I actually decided to make a fly agaric? After all, Alice took a bite from it, which means the mushroom should not be poisonous. But for some reason in my head it was clearly deposited that this mushroom is a fly agaric. I've even gone to reread the tale, but it doesn't tell what kind of mushroom this was. Perhaps somewhere in a movie or a cartoon was the fly agaric? Write me if you remember anything about this. This ornament is quite large, so it will look better on a large Christmas tree. Oh, you can make a decoration out of it if you attach the mushroom to a wooden slice. So, I hope you liked today's video and my Christmas characters based on Alice in Wonderland. By the way, this is the second part of my Alice in Wonderland series. In case you missed the first video, I'll leave the link for it in the description box below. I made Alice and the Red Queen there. I'm going to make more Alice in Wonderland characters in my next videos. So, if you are interested, please join my community and subscribe to my channel in order not to miss new videos. I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Thanks for watching this video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!